Please swear or affirm that this testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. I do. All right, before you start on your direct counsel, let me just inquire as of the witness, have you reviewed any of the trial testimony in this case, watched it or listened to it online or anywhere else? I have not, no. Okay, thank you for that representation. I'll also advise you to please, for our record in the case, make verbal responses to any questions and try to avoid speaking at the same time as anyone that's questioning you. So with those rules in mind, Ms. Blake, if you'd like to inquire on direct, you may. Thank you, Your Honor. Would you please state your full name? My name is Cassandra Inclon. Where are you currently employed? I am a detective with the Chandler Police Department in Arizona. How long have you been employed with them? This month is 22 years. What is your current position? I'm a detective assigned to our robbery homicide unit, and I have been there since, in that unit since 2009. And prior to that, did you hold other positions? I did. And what were those? So I initially started as a patrol officer, worked primarily weekend graveyards, moved to what was our general investigations unit at the time as a detective out of patrol. That unit morphed into our family violence unit, stayed in that unit for about two years. I then moved into our narcotics and organized crime unit as a detective. I worked there for about five years and then moved over to our homicide unit, and I have been there since. Do you have any specialized training in order to be a law enforcement officer? So in Arizona, we are post certified in the state, so it's a state certification. You have to attend an academy. I attended the Arizona Law Enforcement Academy, which is run by Phoenix PD. It's a conglomeration of a lot of different departments that use that academy. You get approximately 480, 500 hours of training in that academy, which once upon graduation, you get a post certificate to be a peace officer in Arizona. And then subsequent to that, you go through a field training program at your agency. Do you recall if you were working on July 11th of 2019? I was. Do you recall responding to the report of a shooting? I do. Do you know approximately what time the call came in? Your Honor, I'm going to object. I'm sorry to keep lodging the same objection, but just to clarify the record, I've previously objected to this witness under 404B, Idaho Rules of Evidence. All right. I appreciate you making the record, Mr. Archibald. Certainly there's a right to do that. It doesn't disturb the court whatsoever if you make a continuing objection, nor should it disturb the jurors if you continue to object. The court has previously made a ruling on this for the reasons that I stated in that ruling and incorporate into this determination to overrule the objection. This evidence pursuant to 404B will be allowed to be presented by the state with a limiting instruction that will be further provided in deliberations. So with that, Ms. Blake, you can continue with your direct and the objections overruled. Thank you, Your Honor. Do you recall approximately when that call came in? It was about 8.30, 8.45 in the morning. Did you respond out at that time? I did. Do you recall where you responded? So I responded to the residents on Four Peaks. At the time that I arrived, patrol had already established a secure area for investigations. Once I responded there, then additional investigative staff detectives were responding, and then we did some basically task or job assignments. And is that common practice to have some detectives assign different tasks? It is. And when you arrived, at some point did you observe Lori Vallow? I did. Was she there when you arrived? I don't know if she was initially there. At one point while I was outside the residence, I realized that she was standing near a vehicle with one of the patrol officers. 
some point, did you end up making contact with Ms. Vallow? I did. And how did that come about? Uh, initially, I walked over and had contact uh, with her and her daughter, um, and I was moving them over to um, what we refer to as our care unit. Um, it's a crisis response that is run through our fire department. Um, they can come out and provide various different services. So I was moving them over to their van. Um, it's summer, it's hot, um, and moving them a little bit further away from the interior scene of the larger scene that we had. And when you were moving them kind of away over to the CARES unit, had you become aware of Ms. Fallow's connection to the shooting victim? Yes. And what did you learn that connection was? I learned that Ms. Vallow was the wife of the victim and the sister of the other involved party. And when you say the other involved party, was that the individual uh, reported to have been the shooter? Correct. And did you learn his identity? Uh, that was Alex Cox. After uh, assisting Ms. Fallow in getting moved over to the CARES unit area, were you present when a notification was made to her? I was. And what was the notification about? Uh, one of the responsibilities of detectives in our unit is to conduct um, death notifications to either the legal next of kin or uh, appropriate involved parties. Um, at that time, my sergeant and I decided to um, provide an official death notification to Lori Vallow in reference to Charles. And you were present when that notification was provided? I was. Do you recall what Ms. Vallow's reaction was? I do. And what was that? She didn't have much of a reaction. Um, when she was informed that uh, Charles was deceased, she had responded that she already knew um, and made statements that she was present uh, when it had happened, which was new information to detectives um, and didn't really appear to have much of a reaction. And had you made any observations about Ms. Vallow's presence or behavior uh, prior to the death notification? Yes. And what were those observations? Um, at the time that I initially saw her and while I was in front of the residence, uh, she was standing with her daughter near what we later found out was um, Charles's rental car um, in proximity with a patrol officer. Um, she appeared calm, um, very non-emotional, uh, was kind of hanging out and seemed to be just having kind of some general conversation, not really upset just kind of at one point she was laughing, um, just kind of was standing around. And this was prior to being notified of the death of Charles? Correct. Um, that was prior to me moving her over towards the van. In, at some point were you assigned some additional roles? I was. Investigation? I was. What were the, what was your next assignment? Um, Detective Moffitt was assigned as the case agent, um, which is typical for how we conduct investigations. And I was assigned to do um, follow up or more extensive interviews with Lori Vallow and Tylee Ryan. And was that in part based on the information Ms. Vallow provided about being present? Correct. Did you complete the interview there on scene? No. Uh, where did you complete the interview? Uh, the Lori Vallow and Tylee Ryan were transported by me um, back to our police station, and the interviews were conducted in what we refer to as our FAC, which is our Family Advocacy Center. Um, it has um, particular interview rooms set up for um, victims and witnesses of crime. And you said you transported both Lori Vallow and Tylee Ryan there? I did. Did Ms. Vallow make any statements while you were transporting her? Statements? 
Um, I guess let me ask it this way. Was there any conversation uh, while you were driving Ms. Vallow and Tylee Ryan to be interviewed? Yes, there was conversation. Not specific to the event, though. And is it typical that you do not discuss the event on the drive? Yes, we try not to have any discussion. The intention is to, um, one, conduct an interview in an interview room so it can be recorded and monitored. Also, is we typically try, um, under best practice, to interview potential witnesses or victims separate from each other. Um, so I didn't want to talk to um, Lori and Tylee together. I wanted to talk to them separately. Did you make observations about Ms. Vallow's behavior uh, on the drive to the FAC? I did. And what were those observations? Uh, similar to what I had seen earlier, um, she was calm, um, unemotional, I would say, not upset. Uh, the conversation revolved around Tylee and her school and kind of Tylee's future plans. Um, she was almost nonchalant about uh, the conversation. When you arrived at the FAC, did you in fact conduct an interview with Ms. Vallow? I did. Do you remember approximately what time of day you would have conducted that interview? Uh, I think it was about 10, 10.30 in the morning um, before lunch um, within a couple hours of the incident happening. Did Ms. Fallow, in fact, participate in the interview with you? She did. And what do you recall if she told you anything regarding how she came to live at the residence where you'd responded? Yes. And what did she tell you? Uh, she had indicated that they had lived at the residence for just a few weeks, um, that Charles had rented the house um, where they were reside residing, and that, that they were separated um, and that she was living at the house uh, with Tylee and J.J., Did she indicate anything regard? Um, she indicated they were separated. Did she indicate anything else regarding her relationship with Charles that you recall? Uh, she had discussed at one point that um, that he had gone back to Texas to Houston, and that at one point that she had ended up going back out there. Um, the way she described it is almost like a reconciliation um, for the family and that uh, she had come back to Arizona and that that house has, had rented because she was going to stay in Arizona. Um, at one point in the interview she described, um, at one point Charles had taken JJ back to Houston uh, with him and described allowing that to happen um, and then coming back to the rental in Arizona. And when she talked about Charles having J.J. and that she'd allowed it, had she indicated anything additionally regarding J.J.'s care? Yes. And what was that? Uh, she discussed um, J.J.'s special needs care. Um, we discussed he had a particular school in Arizona, um, his services plan, and just kind of all that that entails um, to provide care for him. Um, she had discussed that when Charles took J.J. back to Houston that he didn't have any of those services and have that support. Um, and she uh, made reference to letting him take J.J. because he was basically going to figure out how hard it was to take care of him. Um, and then she discussed when she went back to Houston how she went back for that reconciliation even though he didn't have any care and didn't have those services set up and things like that and just discussed how difficult that was and how hard that was to be able to have that all those things in place for him for his care. And so she had indicated that Charles would realize how hard it was to care for JJ? Correct.
Do you recall if Ms. Vallow indicated anything regarding her knowledge as to whether Charles was going to be arriving in Arizona on the 11th? Yes. And what did she indicate? She had indicated that uh, he had contacted her, called her, and said that he was coming into town. Um, she had offered to book him a hotel room because he wasn't going to stay at the house with them, and that they had arranged that morning that Charles would pick J.J. up at the house and take J.J. to school. And I guess to back up just a little bit, you indicated she'd mentioned that she had gone to Houston to be with Charles. Correct. Did she indicate to you why she was then in Arizona? That she had left and come back to Arizona, and her description is that um, they were separated, that the marriage was ending. So she knew that Charles was going to be in town, and was he, do you know, or do you recall if she indicated when he was going to arrive in Arizona? She had said that he was coming into town on Wednesday, um, and that she had offered, like I said, to book him a hotel, um, and that Thursday morning he could come pick J.J. up, I think she indicated at 730, and take J.J. to school. And when you talk about that Wednesday, would that have been July 10th? That was the day before, correct. And when you say the day before, are you referring? what are you referring to? The day before the shooting. And that was also, would have been the day before you were interviewing Ms. Vallow? Correct. What did she tell you regarding, or did she tell you anything regarding whether or not Charles had arrived to pick JJ up? Yes. What did she tell you with regards to that? Uh, she indicated that uh, he arrived at the house. Um, I believe that she said he was a couple minutes late and that she had J.J. ready to go with his backpack and things like that, um, that uh, she described J.J. as being uh, reluctant uh, to go with Charles initially and that they had uh, gotten J.J. out and settled to, to leave for school, um, she describes being in the house and that uh, Charles had left his phone inside the house and that he came back into the house with J.J. outside to retrieve his phone. So Charles came back in the residence without J.J.? Correct. Did she indicate to you who else was at the residence that morning? Uh, through the interview, she had identified everybody else that was present at the house. Who did she indicate was present at the house? Uh, Tylee was home, and then she indicated that her brother, Alex, had spent the night the night before um, at her request. And did she tell you why she had requested Alex stay the night? She indicated that she had asked her brother to spend the night because Charles was coming into town, and that she wanted her brother there. And she said um, Charles had left his phone in the house and came back to get it. Is that correct? Correct. What did she tell you happened? Well, let me back up. Did she tell you who had the phone when Charles came back in? Yes. And who was that? Uh, she had the phone when he came back in the house. Did she tell you what happened at that point? She did. And what was that? She indicated that he became very upset when he saw that she had the phone, um, that uh, she made statements to him about messages on the phone, and that he was extremely angry and wanted the phone back. And she began to move around. Um, she described being in the kitchen. Uh, she moving around to basically keep the phone while this argument started. So she indicated that she kept the phone in her possession. Correct. And it was Charles' phone. Correct. As she was moving around the house, did she indicate anything else happened? Yes. And what was that? Uh, she indicated that at one point, um, Tylee was in her Tylee was in Tylee's room, and that she, Tylee came out of the room um, in possession of a bat, and that her brother at one point came out um, 
and was observing the situation unfolding. And she indicated Tylee came out with a bat. Do you recall if she indicated anything happened with Tylee and the bat? Yes. And what was that? She described uh, Tylee basically prodding at Charles. Um, they were in, uh, Lori and Tylee were in very close proximity of each other in kind of the beginning of a hallway. Um, and she describes Tylee almost like prodding at Charles and uh, almost in defense of Lori and that uh, Charles ultimately ended up uh, physically taking the bat from Tylee. And did she indicate what happened after Charles took the bat from Tylee? She did. What was that? Uh, she described uh, Charles as being um, extremely angry. And at one point, uh, her brother interceded, um, coming up behind Charles and basically grabbing him around and pulling him backwards. And she described a physical altercation beginning between Alex and Charles. Did she indicate whether or not there was any exchange of words? She indicated that they were fighting, and um, but not specifically as to what they were saying. Did she indicate whether or not anyone was injured in that struggle between, or the fight between Charles and Alex at that time? Uh, I don't recall. After she describes the struggle or the fight between Charles and Alex, did she indicate what happened next? Yes. And what was that? Uh, she directed at one point Tylee outside um, because JJ was outside. So she had directed Tylee outside to JJ and she had moved through, through the house into the kitchen, which you would become an ear witness, not an eye witness, because you can hear but wouldn't be able to see. So she had described moving around and being able to hear what's going on but not seeing what's going on. Um, and she describes hearing one gunshot. After hearing the gunshot, did she tell you what she then did? She did. What was that? Um, she indicated that upon entry back into the room, she could see Charles down on the floor, and that at that point she uh, made a decision to go to her children. Um, she went outside and described uh, J.J. as, like, coming back towards the house, um, and at that point she put J.J. in the car and with Tylee left uh, with J.J. with the intention to take him to school. And before she left, she indicated she'd heard a shot and seen Charles on the floor. Is that correct? Correct. Do you know where Charles' phone was at that point? I do not. At some point, did you later recover Charles' phone? I did. Were you informed where it had been? Uh, at the time that we recover, I recovered the phone, it was uh, with... Lori and Alex in Charles's rental car. Did Lori, she told you she went outside with the intention to take JJ to school. Did she tell you what she did next? She did. And what was that? Um, she had indicated they left the house. Um, she advised that they actually went through the drive through at Burger King um, because JJ is very fond of chicken fries and Sprite. Uh, they went through to get him food and then took him to school. And then her and Tylee returned to the house. Did she indicate when she saw Charles on the ground if she saw where Alex was? I believe she mentioned him being in the proximity, but we didn't talk specifically um, as far as positioning like we would in like a walk-through interview or something like that. After she left, did she indicate if she received any phone calls? We did discuss phone calls. Do you recall what she stated regarding that? 
She indicated shortly after leaving the house that her brother Alex had called her and asked her if she had left, and she indicated that she did, that she was taking J.J. to school and that he needed to call 911. Are you aware of any 911 calls being placed by Lori Vallow that morning? I am not aware of any, no. She indicated she had her phone with her? She did. Did you speak with Detective Moffitt about your interview with Ms. Vallow? I did. Do you know if he had interviewed anyone that morning? Detective Moffitt interviewed Alex Cox. Are you aware if there were discrepancies in what Alex Cox reported from what Lori Vallow told you? I am aware, yes. And are there discrepancies? There are. Once the interview was completed, what happened next? Once the interview with Lori was complete, I conducted an interview with Tylee, and then once Detective Moffitt completed his interview with Alex, at that point myself and Detective Moffitt transported Lori, Tylee, and Alex back to the house. When you transported Lori back to the house, did you make any observations regarding her demeanor or behaviors? I did. What were those observations? So I drove. Detective Moffitt was in the very back. We actually took the victim services van so we could transport all three together. During the entirety of the car ride, she was very calm and put together, very nonchalant about what had happened, not upset, and there was some conversation and chatter about kind of Tylee and school and just kind of mundane conversation, very nonchalant about what was going on at the time. And if I may have just a moment, Your Honor. You may. I have no further questions, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, Ms. Blake. Cross-examination. So you indicate, Detective, that these interviews were recorded? Correct. And did you watch those again to remind you what had happened some almost four years ago? I did. And is that how you base your testimony, is reviewing all that again? Partially, yes. And so the interview with Lori was recorded? Correct. The one in the FAC was, yes. The interview with Tylee was recorded? Yes. The interview with Alex was recorded? I believe so, yes. And then after all these interviews, then you detectives, you all get together and compare notes? Yeah. Fair. And it was determined at that time that Alex Cox was justified in self-defense of this shooting? No. Were there any arrests of Alex Cox? Your Honor, may we approach? Yes. Thank you. 
All right, we took a brief sidebar. We're back on the record now. Council, we were just discussing the nature of this testimony. Uh, I'll just indicate on the record the last question posed by uh, Mr. Archibald asking the detective, quote, were there any arrests of Alex Cox? Uh, Mr. Archibald, there's not an objection at this point. There was a sidebar. So uh, you can proceed with that question or you can withdraw the question or however you want to go forward with your cross at this time. Did you arrest Alex Cox on July 11th, 2019? I did not. The information that you had of an argument uh, between Charles and Lori and Alex and Tylee, uh, was that consistent with all your interviews? Mostly. And was it consistent that Tylee had uh, brought a bat to the argument to defend her mother? Correct. Was it consistent that uh, in your interviews that Charles took away the bat from Tylee? Correct. Was it consistent that uh, Alex was hit in the head by Charles with the bat with all these interviews? Yes. Now you say, in, in your experience, uh, that Lori was not upset or acting, or acting a certain way. Um, is there is there a correct and an incorrect way to act uh, when your estranged husband is, is shot? I don't know that there's a correct way to react to any death. It was, it left an impression upon me how unemotional she was. Thank you, Detective. I don't have anything else. All right, thank you, Mr. Archibald. Any redirect, Ms. Blake? Yes, Your Honor. Detective Inklin, you were asked if the Chandler Police Department made a determination that this was justifiable homicide? I was asked that, yes. Is that a determination that the police department makes? Absolutely not. How, what is the process uh, for making that determination? So I'll, in Aaron, I'll object, Your Honor, that's outside the scope of direct. Your Honor, defense specifically asked, isn't it true that Chandler deemed this a justifiable homicide? She responded, no, I'm doing some follow-up on that. Counsel, given the circumstances where we are, I'm going to sustain that objection and find that's outside the scope of proper cross-examination and sustain that. Do you generally meet with the prosecution, the prosecutor's office at some point during an investigation? I'll yes. object, Your Honor. Relevance? Sustained. So the jury's uh, instructed to disregard that last response. Are you aware if Alex Cox is alive? I'll I object, Your Honor, relevance. Overruled. I am aware that he is deceased. Do you know when he died? I believe it was in December the following year. Could it have been December of the same year? It could have been, yes. 
If Alex Cox was still alive, do you believe your agency would have made a recommendation for Object charges to be filed? Objection. Sustained. Instruct the witness not to answer that. Your Honor, she was asked a question specifically regarding the arrest of Alex Cox by defense. I understand, and I'm limiting the nature of the cross because this is information related to Arizona for which the defendant's not on trial. Do you generally arrest someone the day of an, an investigation is opened? I'll ob object relevance. Your Honor, again, they specifically that's, asked. That's overruled, and she, the witness can answer. Can you say that again? Sorry. Do you generally make an arrest the day an investigation is opened? I would say no, because generally every case is different, and it depends on the circumstances in the case and the totality of the investigation. If I may have just a moment. Your Honor, may we approach briefly? Yes. Your Honor, the state has no further questions. 